Hey, 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 hey. We're gonna read some more kaiji. It's been like a fucking long ass time because of the channel and all that and problems, and I've been a lazy ass motherfucker. I've been one lazy ass motherfucker. But we getting back to it now. Finally, Kaiji, part six, into, oh, <clears throat> he's outside of his room. By the way, uh, I lost one of the live streams, that's why there's a missing video in the playlist and on the channel. If anybody had a question about that, nobody's asked, but I would just, I'm just gonna put that out there. I'm sorry about that, but the channel got deleted, I wasn't able to save the live stream and everything, you know. Anyway. Um, so yeah, and it's out here. Okay, we're gonna go the whole diagram. Which is a single door keeping them apart. Yeah, so how, why is Endo here? We, we didn't really follow that logic through. Okay, so while they were celebrating that an additional car had quietly driven into the road just in front of the building where Kaiju's mother lives, to the right to right behind the car's lookout team. Rolled in without warning. It was a coincidence. A whim went into his part. Okay. Okay, so he just came to to uh to talk to the lookout team and they were like, oh shit. Dredger's here while we were sleeping. Look alive. Okay, yeah, so here's some supplies and Yeah, so and no, for no real, like again, this is just the slightest, tiniest hint, but in this situation, would you not also follow through? Like, you know, everything resides on this. So, of course you're going to do it. He makes a good point, though. They've been here five times, and they've only ever seen this lady this first time. And she had groceries coming home. Hmm, it's definitely something you want to follow up on. If it's something as big of a case as this, normally coincidence, as big of a case as this, you want to follow up on it, because why not? True, it's not common for people to leave at night. Yeah. So three times in the day. Three times total. But I mean, still, that's only three times. Okay, so yeah, we got the clues now. TV was on, heard talking. But yeah, and then the phone call. He's definitely going to look into that phone call. He's got to. But do they have records of it? All right, yep. Continue with the assumption that someone else is there. All right, so now we're going to get the class that he's going to go. Indo's going to go up to the third floor, come all the way back down, and be like, did you see me do it? And we're going to see the whole goddamn thing, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, this is definitely, even though they're Tei, it's still too suspicious. But he's not that suspicious. <laughs> this is so silly. Alright, yep. No, too bad. I'm up here, all the way on the top floor. Yep, just crouch down. <laughs> like, he was smiling, like he was playing a game with him, and then he got immediately so serious. Like, alright, now I gotta go knock on the doors. Alright, so just an entire chapter of endo logic. Just like, here's why he's here. But, alright, cool, it's nice to know. Hmm. So, how she reacted? Sure, if she sees him, then she's not. She's gonna might immediately shut the door and run and tell Kaiji to leave. Okay, so he knows that she's pretty stupid. Uh, they seen her go shopping at the supermarket, and although she sometimes comes back with the groceries in her own purse or plastic bag, they seen her coming back with a shopping basket still in hand. Okay, this is, this, is, this is really interesting, like, little funny tidbits on Kaiji's mom. Should get off the bike and talk to them. For some reason, get overjoyed, and then just walk away, yep. Mm-hmm. She's very carefree. Yep, if she panicked a little bit, then going to complete self-defense. So what's he going to do? Okay, so he d he didn't wasn't gonna knock, but he did knock, right? So he's just gonna wait. All 
All right, so I, I don't know why they specifically are saying, like, don't touch him. I guess maybe because like, they don't want him to get hurt if Kaiji decides to do something, maybe, or something. But maybe, maybe because, you know, it might just be a woman. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yeah, so they're going to check and see what's Kaiji. He's going to the back to watch from there. So much, like, positioning here. Okay, so I guess, I guess Indo never knocked at all. I thought that he could have, that he knocked at the, uh, in the last chapter that I read. Maybe Kaiji was just looking out the people before he left. It's been a while since I read the chapter, so I don't remember exactly how it ended, but it was, okay. <laughs> even I know it's a BMW and I don't even know cars. Well, it's better than me. I didn't even know it was a BMW. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's tying it all the way back to Kaiji's past. He knows. He used to steal them. Like the little doohickeys on them. So what's the plan here? Are we just going to have to stay here? Oh, well, that would make his mom so happy, though. Mom, I'm going to have to live with you for quite a while. Until they, they, you know, fuck off. Yep, they don't know exactly that he's here. It's just a suspicion. So we can lay low. The third exit. Huh. When you go to the top floor and look at the ceiling, there's a ladder that goes even further up. How street. Okay. I mean, he's just gonna rappel down. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Hatches on the other side. Up. Oh, so everywhere they would see. Hmm. Yeah, they would see him. Yep, all I can do is that. Just stay here. This whole love here. Sorry, Mama, but I'm gonna have to spend the night. <laughs> I need to bulwark. Never heard that in my life. Bulwark? You're just gonna bull through and walk out? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a <laughs> this is a weird pun they had to like trans you know translate. I'm not sure what he said there, but anyway. It's his, her scatterbrainness. Bulwark. What? I need to fortify behind the walls of this house. What? Okay, I gotta look up what bulwark is. Okay, a bulwark is a defensive wall. Okay. Never heard of that before in my life, so, alright. That's a pretty goddamn good pun. Props to, I assume, Sonic Crazy. Also, I, why don't I make this bigger if I can? Well, I can't. Never mind. Okay, yeah. A week. A whole week. <laughs> I feel His mom is looking really weird right now, but I feel like she's going to love it. Also, this chapter's title is Bulwark. Really? Seriously? <laughs> yep, exactly what I thought. Yep, very, very happy about it. But I'm happy about it too. This is such a fun arc. God, this is so... Like, this arc in this part is such a fun arc. The, the mom arc of this part. That's kind of confusing to say, but... Yeah, don't do anything unnecessary. Absolutely not. Do not get us caught. Yeah, don't go out of your way to buy food for two people. You just have to make buy. Yep. Gotta only buy one and then share it. I don't know, would this give it away? It seems like this is just how she naturally does things. <laughs> yeah, you really seem like you would though, Mom. <laughs> oh yeah, acting a little bit more despondent because uh own but no, they're gonna notice that because she doesn't normally. Are they not going to notice that she spends so much time in the bathroom and talking? How are they not going to notice this? They have to. Even just the time in the bathroom she spends. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're exchanging information with the new crew that's coming in to swap over the uh, shift. Um, you know, explaining the old lady to her and everything. And they're having to split up these two people. One of them's going to go watch the veranda and one's going to watch the normal entrance and exit. So, I'm not sure how it's going to go, though, because they only have one and one, and the guy in the veranda doesn't have a way to communicate. I, this is the third time I've said this in, like, a week. I don't know why I keep saying communicate instead of communicate. <laughs> don't know why. All 
All right, and we got the confirmation as well. The the other guys have not seen the old lady, so definitely probably not old resident here. And I also like how they it's very Fukumoto again, just specifically like okay, they've worked on these amount of shifts, these amount of shifts together. So we got to minus those. These are the total number of shifts they've worked separately, just to like give an accurate factual number. It's so complicated to take so long, but it's so Fukumoto to give us the correct math. We can't we can't be you know hyperbolic here. Yeah, so I'm glad he's not saying like that settles it. It's Kaiji, but that settles it. It's a mysterious visitor. Have stayed there for a very long time. Yep. So there's more enough reason to suspect it's Kaiji. Yep, might just be a friend. Can't jump to any conclusions. Hmm. Also, we can't just let this slip by. We gotta keep watch. Stay here for a while. Okay, this guy's going to the store. Buy some notebook paper and a pen. Compare knowledge. Alright? Perfect. Good. Endo's on the case. These guys don't care at all. They're always like, oh, these fucking higher-ups always making us do our job. <laughs> okay, chapter 310, catalog. Counting them all down. These guys, they better be being paid overtime. Okie dokie, wow. This is fucking amazing. Yes! I love it. It's fucking Dr. Stone Fukumoto. <laughs> Alright. High school student and an elderly woman. I like that we're getting like little depictions for them and who, who all lives here. Like, like we don't have their names or anything. And we don't have a description of what they look like. Just like, uh, there was like a guy who was like a high school student. That's as much as I remember. You know? Not like, oh yeah, black hair. It was spiky, blah, blah, blah. All they probably remembered was high school student. You know, high school student and an elderly woman. Probably lived together because they were on the same floor. Middle-aged company worker, family restaurant worker, general contractor maybe. Why would they, how would they even know that? Uh, and also how would they know he's a family restaurant worker? Maybe because of a uniform? Um, and then a uh, middle-aged lady, middle-aged company worker. And these are all probably just guys that live by themselves it seems like. Young company worker and a housewife mid forties, so maybe together on the same floor, similar age. Company worker in his forties and a young company worker. Why do they think they live together? They're on the same floor and they're similar age. Maybe they live together. Mm, I don't know. Seems weird. Seems weird to put, put them together. And then yeah, a mysterious old lady, pudgy, large build, wearing a kapagi. Okay, we got them all. Yeah, these are crappy drawings. Come on, man. These are just the Fukumoto drawings. <laughs> Making of copies. Does it mean, like, redrawing it? That's perfect, actually. Good idea. Yeah, so if we have a, a description of all residents, Wayne and Kaiji inevitably switches up his disguise. We'll already know what uh, everybody looks like, so we won't have to worry about it. Good idea. Good idea. Hmm. Someone in a motorcycle coming back very late at night. Oh, it's the family restaurant worker. Uh, yep, it's that guy, the family restaurant worker. But that could be how Kaiji sneaks out. Kaiji's got a coat very similar to that. He's got, you can just, you just gotta get a motorcycle helmet somehow. Hmm? What, what is, what was that look about? I'm not sure, hmm? I don't know what the hell that was about. That was a weird interaction. <laughs> but yeah, it's the classic, like, <laughs> you know, all these criminals are just got it got it easy, really. It seems like it, though, but honestly, they don't. They're, those ones are tough-ass lives. So yeah, what's this face about? Okay, so he's gonna think, oh, we gotta get that helmet. Hmm. Oh, they used to be friends! In elementary and middle school. His childhood friend. <laughs> what? This is perfect. Get, get that helmet, man. Yeah, of course they want to leave. Their shift is up. As you just said, you where you work eight hours. So, oh my god, that's why he was like that back there. He was like, oh fuck, I just said that when I want them to actually stay. Mm, yep, you say the darndest things. Mm, Alright, well, we'll see you then. <laughs>
<laughs> hey, I'd totally be doing the same thing. I'm like, all right, oh, my job's done, so I'm out of here. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Well, immediately going back on his words. An absolute hypocrite. <laughs> all right, <laughs> that was ridiculous. That was fucking uh, a goofy, goofy gag. But, uh, I like it. It, it honestly felt very middle manager trying to gow it as, honestly. Uh, okay. The, what, the much-discussed, unprecedented apartment bulwark manga? Excuse me? <laughs> oh, I mean, that is what this has turned into, has it not? The, they keep using the term bulwark. I don't know why. Let's just really stick with this pun. Okay, aspiration. Clearing. Oh boy, this is, oh, this is a mess to read. Clearing our endo's devilish senses. Narrowing is the net around the apartment. Approaching is the time of Kai's capture. What is Chang doing? This is a volume cover. I'm not even sure what he's supposed to be doing there. Was that energy drinks or something that he's sipping through a straw? This is the third volume cover. It looks so stupid. <laughs> When I was your age, like, no, God, not that. <laughs> and he's talking to Tony Gawa here. Interesting, I was just talking about that. True, yeah. Set you free from your lookout duty, yeah. That's a cool way to put it, though. Yeah, like, this is the type of job I would fucking hate. Eight hours of sitting somewhere, just watching something. Shoot me in the brains. Get it over with. <laughs> what is this smile? No, stop. Bad. Bad endo. Bad, bad, bad. Fanatics. Indo immediately turned this around from being Hippocratic to being, like, a, a legitimately rousing speech of, like, if you want your job to be over, then let's fucking do it! <laughs> if we got a dog chained up here, it wouldn't be much different. Honestly, yeah. Honestly, it seems like, yeah, these guys aren't doing much. They're, they're just, like, they're doing a job. What is he? Oh my god. He's okay. So he's cut the cheeses. Oh my god. I can't. This is the weirdest fucking like train of logic hole. Like talking to all these guys, and all you guys do is just stand around here. You're like fucking animals. You're like dogs. You're like scarecrows. Like signs. Like a street sign. Like a Colonel, K <laughs> Colonel Sanders statue outside of a KFC. Like a street lamp. Like the statue. Like fried chicken. Hmm. Fried chicken. Hmm. Oh, he's just saying, go get fried chicken. I thought he was coming to a whole, uh, realization. But no, that was all just, I want fried chicken. Convenience store fried chicken. Oh, Odin. Mm. <sighs> you idiot. You idiot. All I wanted was chicken. Just chicken. Now I want chicken. Oh, I threw it in his face. Oh, you wanted to. Okay. Never mind. Okay, well, mm, forgiven. Yeah, forgiven. This is just Tony Gawa! What is happening? Dude, like, if we're going to absolutely 100% getting more and more influenced by, uh, not more and more, but I guess, like, you know, when this is coming out, Tony Gawa is coming out. Maybe not this chapter, but around this, this arc is when Tony Gawa is coming out. He is getting influenced by it insanely. He's got to be. And still, the mangas are coming out that he probably reads. Like, it's right up his style. It's something that just, like, he would do if he did it. Like, there's, it's something that doesn't feel like a spinoff. It just feels like something he would have written and drawn. God, he's it was such a fucking prick. He loves blowing his smoke into people's faces. What an asshole. What an absolute fucking asshole. Yeah, can't make fun of Chang now. Accidents and mishappens. Oh, scary, man. Scary. It's happening to you now. 
It's gonna happen to fucking Mario at some point, I bet. I mean, Mario is really the focus of the Salvation game, so he might not get a big focus in this arc. I think it may be Kaiji and Chang, and we're getting a lot of Kaiji. Mm. I'm, I'm glad we got the Chang out of the way so we could focus more on Kaiji for a, a more extended period of time. Yep. And a Pinchy. Oh, <laughs> Mama Ito's coming to sleep with Kaiji. Also, why is he still in this outfit? He can. Well, oh, right, right, because of his injuries and stuff. I was gonna say he can get out of the outfit now, but no, he can't. Yep. Hey, Mama. <laughs> That's so cute. If you cry, it makes me feel like I'm not treating my mom right, and it's true. Uh, this narrator really hitting it, new Kurosawa esque, hitting him with those burns. All right, next morning, six thirty, one by one, they're all coming out. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, that's not him. That's not Kaiji. That's way too fat to be Kaiji. That's not Kaiji. Yep. How in the world? What is... Huh? Hmm. So, it was actually an old lady. But he's still not calling it off. The fact that that was almost the exact same thing. Uh, that's that's crazy. I can't believe they didn't immediately be like, oh, well, you know, it must have not been him. That immediately feels like, well, the suspicious thing is not suspicious anymore. So we're d done, right? We're 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 not. We're yeah, we're done. But no, they're still they're not done. They're they're still holding on to hope that he'll use a different outfit. Even though they saw someone that was in the exact same outfit. That's fucking crazy. It seems like Kaiji didn't even plan that. That just happened. Okay, so they're saying for certain that it's not the same old ladies before. Yeah. Yep, and they went up to the third floor. Yeah, they actually had something to do on the second floor. Hmm. And the old lady saw you last night, and the old lady that just went into there, different people, sure. So I guess just because taking their word, taking their word by it, they were that sure by the facial features. So, okay, yeah, this was Endo's plan to pressure Kaiji into wanting to hole up and stay in there. Because um, that will make him more, will he just give in, maybe, or slip up, maybe? Um, something. To give him more clues. But yeah, so he was totally lying to them when he was like, yeah, your job's almost done. Our C route will calm down for us. Yeah, we're gonna wait even more. It won't take that long. Give it an hour to, and he will come. Hmm. Okay, so the morning shift comes. I mean, yeah, the the the, the more I, they said morning shift, right? I guess the yeah morning shift, but it's more like the afternoon shift because they're I guess they're coming at nine a.m. but they're here for most of the afternoon. Okay, so she emerges, Kaiji's mother. Also, is that the first time we got her name Hatsue? Probably when she, when she was first introduced, but we really haven't called her by much other than just mom or Kaiji's mom. To drive away the goddess protecting him. Yeah, Kaiji's mother was lifeline. If we get rid of Kaiji's mother somehow, prevent her from going back home somehow, then they'll have to come out to get no more food. Oh no, they're just saying with his mother gone, we can just go right fucking in right now. Alright, they're going in. They're going in. Shit balls. Kaiji, what the hell are you gonna do? How are you gonna get out of this one, bud? Also, my man, it must be so fucking different in Japan. Do you just call the police for everything? Like, part six has been so much about, like, oh no, this is too suspicious. This is too suspicious. Like, they're talking about. If, if four people went into the entryway, I mean, they're also saying rushed. How about you walk in then? 
How about you fucking walk in? Maybe they want to rush to the kaiji. But still, this, this is such a reoccurring theme in part 6 of one of two things. I don't, I don't know which one it is. Fukumoto not understanding what's suspicious and what is people don't care and will not, like, look into things that just seem like, or whatever. Uh, or two, that Japan's just, you know, I always thought Japan was way more about keep to yourself, you know, don't, don't make a scene, don't, don't be doing, like, I wouldn't expect anybody in Japan to call the police about anything really. I would just expect them to go about their business and maybe call the police if it's something, you know, like solid that they really have evidence on or something, but I don't know, man. This seems, this seems weird. It's just like they're constantly bringing up suspicious stuff that's really not suspicious at all. Doing what they're about to do, having them look over there and signal them, watch all the verandas, and when nobody's looking, signal them to go in, that's fucking suspicious. Holy shit, that is fucking genius criminal tactics right there. When you're trying to gag someone, hold their nose so their breathing is all ragged as you're gagging them. If they try and scream, they're not going to get much out because they don't have much breath. That's fucking genius. God, end that with his criminal tactics, his criminal pro gamer moves. Okay, good, yeah, so if somebody comes into the building, have that guy call them and let them know. Oh yeah, what if they come from above? Hmm. Well, someone's got to go up one floor and stand up there. All the older people live downstairs. It's an unspoken rule that the comparatively younger people should be given apartments further upstairs, so... I guess it seems like a super Japanese way to do things, yeah. Fourth and fifth floors are out of bullets, so to speak, hmm? Okay, so they all have for work. They're out of bullets. Okay. Weird way to put it, but sure. <clears throat> and this is, uh, again, this is so cool because you've seen this in the other way so many times. You've seen Tei as this group of this huge organization that is terrifying, kidnapped so many people, blah, 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 blah. Kaiji's been kidnapped. And now we're seeing on the other side of how the logistics work. And, like, how do you kidnap somebody? It's so difficult. There's so much to go wrong. Anytime you do anything criminal at all, and this is what Kaiji was just talking about with, you know, I can't make fun of Chang, as Endo is saying himself, there's so much that can go wrong. One tiny little accident can fuck everything up. Everything's so uncertain. When you don't have the law on your side, everything is fucked, and you can't really, it, like, one tiny thing can set off a chain reaction that is massive. Because it's so hard to get back on track, it's so hard to, like, get help for something, or, you know, get out of a situation. A proper, respectable, safe, and secure abduction. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I, I mean, it's crazy. They're still calling him a money pilferer. Like, of course, they don't know that he, that you know he won the money fair and square though. When the fuck is Kazi gonna wake up? And if he is, is he just gonna say like, "Yeah, he stole that money from me"? All right, we're going in. Storm in the building. All right, vanished in the entryway. So four to five seconds, Kazi shouldn't have seen them. All right, to the castle they are to see this bulwark apartment. I mean, that's what I gotta name this fucking video, right? The bulwark apartment arc or whatever. All right, it's time to pick this lock. I feel like this whole chapter is gonna be just getting into this door, and something's gonna go wrong. Something is gonna go wrong. Something from someone from upstairs, probably. We have in a bull there again. A kaiji in a bulwark of his mother's apartment. Yeah, I imagine. It's it's an apartment lock. It's not going to be that hard. Yep, so that is the chain lock. So, gotta... But, uh, if Kaiji sees him... Oh, yeah, true. It's going to be loud. It's going to be loud. <clears throat> okay, so they didn't do it. That was all hypothetical with the chain lock being seen everything. I gotta pay more attention to that. I keep... So, it's been a while since I've read Pukumoto. Alright. Yeah, after his mother set off for work, when she came back, she would have to knock and, and, yeah, announce her presence to Kaiji. Makes a lot of sense. I didn't think about that. But yeah, big brain Endo. He's got it. He knows what he's doing. Of course that chain ain't there. It shouldn't be. Unless he knew the exact time she was coming back. Ooh, big brain Kaiji. 
Okay, but why would the chain be up? There's got to be a reason, right? Why would it be up? Oh, it doesn't seem like it. No, no chain. Okay, it's not set. Okay, so he's in the bathroom. Mm. Mm. Kaiji! I can't believe we're in the house. This chapter. Good idea, yeah, yeah. Don't close the door until they're all ready. Everyone gonna go in one room at the same time to find him. It's gonna make noise no matter what, of course. I mean, opening it made noise. Kaiji, how the fuck is he going to get out of here? How the fuck? Unless he did what I thought he did, and he was wearing the motorcycle helmet somehow. That's my. That's still my theory. Charge in, charge in, charge in. But, boom, boom, boom. He's nowhere. He was the motorcycle helmet. Is he in the bathtub? They're going to check. There's no way they wouldn't. Hmm. No, he's here. Hmm. Is he hiding somewhere? And how, how did he know? Did he see him through the people somehow? What's going to be our explanation for um, Kaiji still being here? He played a game of shogi. He cornered him. Error. Okay. Error. Mm. Oh, they they just left. Okay, they left the whole room and everything in the house. I so there's not like, he's gone. He's gone gone. So yeah, he wasn't in the bathtub either. Special consideration. So we made the identity of that lady, old lady, clearer. We'll watch it. Four people. Why four people? Sure, you need four people to capture him. Mm, yeah, they're like, mm, not so sure about that. Possibly she might not be here anymore. Hmm. Oh my god, they're going to fucking talk about it. That, uh, we actually kind of fell asleep for a while there. Yeah. Oh my god, they're gonna be fucking... They might probably lose their jobs over this. Or be seriously, you know, violenced. <laughs> I mean, what you, got, what you gotta, gotta do it, right? You gotta do it. At some point, you, you think like you're you're too far gone, but at some point you just gotta do it. Oh yeah, yeah, he's not gonna be happy about that one. Time for some violence. Mhm. Mm he was even getting along with him and stuff. He was being happy. Yeah, I expected you to just be a sign, to be a dog, to so just sit there and watch, but you couldn't even do that. That's what I thought of you. But no, you are even lower than that. You are lower than a sign. I mean, he's really, he's so true, though. Is there anything less useful than a fallen down sign? Or right, what, you guys are the fucking most useless pieces of shit. You fell asleep on your job to sit there for eight hours and look at people. Your level of incompetence is a goddamn work of art. Now that's a burn. And he fucking yawned. Time to die. Time to die. He's gonna kill him. He's gonna kill him! <laughs> I'll put you to sleep for the rest of eternity! He might actually kill him! Okay, no, no. He. Okay, okay, he didn't kill him. Alright. So, this is good though. I wonder. I, I don't. Is Kaiji still in the apartment or did he escape? Did they overlook him somehow? I highly doubt it, but. I only got a couple more chapters left.
Fuck your pet. Gotta get the chicken. Gotta get that chicken. Uh, well, hey, maybe this is where Kazi's gonna wake up. We know he loves his KFC. I mean, seriously, I can't, he, they were on a 16 hour shift, dude. I would be fucking furious if I was on a 16 hour shift for no reason because somebody fucked up and they fell asleep. I'd be fucking furious. I would kill him. It's customary punishment elementary level. The three for one. For every item of food the pursuer of the punishment eats, those taking the punishment must eat three or three, blah, blah, must eat three more of the same three. Whatever. Sure. It's a small little punishment. Elementary level punishment, but it's still a tough punishment, honestly. Uh, I don't know if I could eat that much. It would kill me. Oh man. This is too real. I, I love a game show called Taskmaster, and something exactly like this happened. You know? Trying to fill the bathtub with the most amount of water in a certain amount of time period. And someone fucking got the, the drain out. Uh, you know, that, that's exactly what they did. All this effort and just, they fell asleep and it all drained. <laughs> a different kind of KHC. I love the kids. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said KFC in the series before. Kazuya did. Like KFC. But kicking, hitting, and cutting. Sure. Yeah, cool will be something like uh, we've seen before. He described it to him. Oh, yes, yeah. so if you want to have that happen to you. Again, super duper 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 Tonigawa-esque. Insanely Tonigawa-esque. With Endo and his subordinates here, doing what he has to do. Whether he's going to be liked or not. So where is he? Okay, I thought an idea. So, yep, aha, genius idea, Mom, it's gonna work. It's brilliant. I'll put on the helmet. Yep, to the Takahashi family residence. Hey. Hey, it's your old friend, Kaiji, in a wig. <laughs> Huh, okay, so tomorrow's my friend. Oh my god, was he dressed up in that? That's why? That makes sense, yeah, because of course, I was like, I always just thought, like, how's he gonna get this helmet? But of course, he would also have to get to work somehow. And then it would switch a little bit later. So tomorrow's the first day, off in weeks, so I'm not actually going to work. Oh, shit, so his mom's gonna bring it back. Okay, perfect, perfect. So then who was dressed as Kaiji? Somebody random? Yeah, we brought your motorcycle. This is crazy. My childhood friend that I've been talking to in 50 fucking years. Hey, can I borrow your motorcycle and your helmet? Okay, yep. So, and they got her to do it. Okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> yep, so they wouldn't be focused on Kaiji at all. Yep. All in front of Endo. Shin nice kaiji nice <laughs> That is a fucking uh I love this. It's just a tiny little gamble we get in the middle of part six just thrown in there. Ooh, here's a little apartment gamble, you know. And this one was a gamble. This is a legit gamble. You know, a lot of part six hasn't been gambles, it's just been like cool strategies and stuff and things going wrong and complicated adventures and wacky shenanigans. But like this is a legit gamble that he had to do of what's the best option to take and is this gonna pay off? Is this going to work? Damn, man. Nice, Hatsue. Thank you, Nana. Yes. <laughs> and thank you, Takashi. Like, fucking sweet assist, guys. In the end, probably no idea what you were doing. Sweet assist. Hell yeah. Appreciate it. Alright, uh, I think we will probably read one more chapter. Um, even if it gets back into, like, something else, this is sort of, like, maybe the epilogue conclusion of this arc. So, this is kind of, this is a perfect place for me to end it last time, too. Endo coming to the door, because this whole time has been nothing but Endo. But, I want to I get a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of relief. Let's, let's get the little epilogue here, maybe.
<laughs> yeah, he's got to be extremely happy. But don't, oh, no, 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 please. Hey, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> right back to getting this. <laughs> this is so Kaiji-esque. <laughs> Cannot be stopped. <laughs> Kaiji's so fucking goofy! <laughs> oh, police bike. Mm-hmm. True, yep, and he's got no driver's license, and it's not owned, like, it's not under his name or anything, so, oof. Alright. So, alright. So, did he have to explain, like, I've been doing some bad stuff or whatever? Like, because this isn't even his mom's going to bring it back. This is Tatsu's going to bring it back on his own. Okay, so to mail the bag and the key. Yep. Aww. His mom's being all sentimental. Aww. <laughs> Yeah, went and left her again. So we're seeing a little bit of a flashback here with this. Oh, and his father, too. The kind of thing really happens, doesn't it? Okay, so what did he tell him? When superiors at your company used to work for us chasing after you. Okay, so he gave him that whole story. <laughs> this is so... This seems so much like a scheme on Kaiji's end. I can't believe they went along with this. This really just seems like, hey, I'm going to steal your motorcycle. <laughs> I, unbelievable. I can't believe they went along with this. But. <clears throat> oh, and then she sees it. The scar. Oh, the bandaid comes off. And the ear. Yeah. Oh, he bonked her in the head. Oh, this is so, so sweet. But now she knows, and he, he doesn't know that she knows. Oh my god, and a ton of money. This money isn't dangerous. Okay. Mm. Yeah, how can I not money? <laughs> how can I not worry? Man, I feel so bad for her, but... Gross, yeah, yeah, really gross. <laughs> uh, that's a mother for you. That's a mother for you. All right, that is. I assume it's got to be. Let me let me see. I can see the like thumbnails for the first page of next chapter. Um, okay, yeah, it's the van. It's the van and and Chang then. So, uh, I guess next chapter we're we're back in it with uh re reuniting with the boys, our boys here. Uh, but. Great little tiny mini uh, gamble, as I said. I love the little bulwark arc. So unique of Kaiji having to just, like, sit in one location and have two two sides really at a stalemate. And yet, it wasn't boring to read. Like, a lot of stuff in Part 5 was when they were at stalemates and stuff and their logic. This was similar, but it wasn't, it wasn't boring to read. And it wasn't too many chapters. Uh, and a lot of different kind of stuff happens. We got some really cool... Uh, things like the, the drawing of all the people and some logic going on there. I loved how, like, uh, the, just, like, seeing more and more of the Tei group is interworking and everything is, is fantastic. Anytime I get that. So Endo with his subordinates was, was golden. Golden to see. All right. But I'm excited to be back with our boys. I'll see you guys for the next one. Until then, get the fuck out of here.